Uh, so good afternoon, uh, teachers. Welcome to this uh, Nearpod demonstration for Oberoi International School. As I've mentioned before, we'll have some of our secondary teachers in here um, exploring this uh, product with us as well. Um, I know for the primary division, we've used this before uh, in the um, beginning of lockdown um, to uh, varying degrees of success. Um, it's a really fun and interactive tool. Um, as you've seen by my email, there's lots you can do with it as far as integrating interactivity into the classroom. So instead of just having your slides or your, um, your content in a, a very teacher-led format, uh, Nearpod gives us the ability to um, project our uh, content on the children's screens, on an iPad or on a computer, whatever device they're using, and then also allows us to have in-game interactivity, such as quizzes, uh, the collaboration tools uh, similar to Padlet, um, the drawing features, which can be utilized in lots of different ways that we'll have a look at. Uh, mine and Mr. British's favorite is the 3D uh, VR virtual field trips, which I'm sure some of you explored as well in the past in our um, exploration units and civilization units as there. So that's why I'm going with the, the general theme today. Um, and if you have um, not seen the link in the um, comment section, uh, then just click that link um, there. And what you should do is come onto the Nearpod. I'm just going to quickly run through the demonstration, the, the features of Nearpod. And then we'll spend about 15 minutes just looking at what it offers. And then you can get some ideas about how you could uh, deploy similar things in your classroom. And then what we'll do is have a look at the teacher side of things. Uh, most of you have now been added um, as uh, uh, premium members. So if you are been using Nearpod as a free user, you will now come on as our premium member. You should get an email uh, sometime in, um, either on Friday for primary or today for secondary. And it might be in your spam folder or your updates folder. Just check that. And then if you click that link, you'll be enrolled onto the Oberoi International School free trial. Okay. So, yeah, if you guys uh, click on the link, uh, you should be able to see that now. You should be able to see something that looks a little bit like this. And hopefully you can see that from my end. Uh, and I'll show you on my screen. If you are on a laptop, that's fine. You can be on the Nearpod screen or you can be on the Zoom call and you should be able to see it either way. Uh, but you'll be able to see the varying the degrees. So you've got the teacher and the student view. Um, so on this view, um, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, what we'll be able to do now is we are in a live participation mode. So this is really good if you are doing a synchronous lesson. You can also set these up for an asynchronous lesson as well. So you don't need to lead them through the content. They can go through at different paces and you can have quizzes and interactivity within there that they can access and you can download the reports and the answers for at the end as well. So it's really flexible, not just for synchronous lessons like we're going to show you now, but also the asynchronous part um, of our teaching and learning. Um, so as a teacher, the way we're going through now is... Um, um, setting up as you should see that your slides have changed now. So yeah, so hopefully if you're logged onto the Nearpod, if not, just go to nearpod.com uh, forward slash join and you can type in the code as well if people are joining late or uh, Mr. Pradesh and Ms. Hamel or one of my um, IT integrators will also put the link in the chat one more time if you need access to that. Um, as you three, as I'm going through the content, it's again, the content is there. Um, Again, I'm trying to go for secondary as well. It might be different in primary, uh, maybe less text heavy. Um, but you can see that I can have all my slides that I would have or anything I'm using, any sort of visual elements that I'm using for my lesson. I can have that on Nearpod and I can guide the students through. So if there's any content here I want to talk about briefly before we move on, you can lead the students through that. And this is also a very good thing as well if we are thinking about a hybrid model potentially uh, in the coming months or um, uh, when, 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 when it's available to. Uh, if you had children in another room or students in another room or at home, at the same time, all of them can be logged onto this call and they'll be going through the same content at your pace if you wanted to. So that's another powerful feature of Nearpod. So it doesn't matter where they are, um, they will be coming through at the same time as you. Um, here we go then. Let's have a, a, a good a, a gl glimpse at some of the interactive elements. Um, this is just a, a demonstration of a hook question here. So a bit of prior knowledge. Um, you can go ahead and have a draw. Um, 
don't necessarily need to ask the question, but the question at the top of your screens that you should see is what do you already know about the Great Pyramids of Giza? Um, why do you think they're famous? Draw in words, sentence, or pictures. So don't worry about actually answering that if um, you're not sure, but just go ahead and try and write something, try and draw something on your screens now. Um, and if you can see my screen, you should be able to see that I can see all the students at one time. So I've got about 100 of you, I think 105 teachers on the call with me, and I can see what everybody's drawing. I can see who's waiting to draw, who submitted. So Mr. Aaron and Ms. Rosie, well done, you've submitted um, something, and I got drawings of some people who are drawing, um, starting to um, put pen to paper there. So that's really exciting. So almost you can see who's engaged in your lesson as well. I'm sure many of you have had days where the camera's off, you're not sure if they're there, whereas if you have this element there, then you'll, you'll absolutely know who's um, taking part. Um, and I'm sure as we get to the end of the academic year, it's, it's another source of motivation and enthusiasm, something to get excited about. So this is, again, a live participation mode. So the teacher can control when to move on. But like I said before, you can set this up for an asynchronous mode as well, where the, the students can go ahead and draw and then move on on their own pace. So there's student paced and then there's teacher led. Awesome. So I can see teachers starting to uh, import images as well. Uh, that's exciting. Uh, lots of drawing, lots of text box. I kind of don't want to move on. I want to give everyone a chance to uh, have a go here. Uh, but I'm going to move on for the sake of the demonstration. So sorry if you didn't get a chance there. Um, but you can see then in a synchronous lesson how... How, it's, uh, how we can move on if we need to, if there's anyone who um, needs to be, uh, if we need to move on to the next step. Okay, so what we should see now, again, is another really um, powerful element of uh, Nearpod, which is exciting. Um, so you can see here, like, you've got a nice uh, 360 model here. You've got a pyramid behind you, in front of you. Uh, you can see some of the tourism. You can see some of the ruins there. And then if I want everyone to move on to the next part of the lesson, instead of saying, OK, everyone come back now, come back to Zoom, I can just move them on straight away. Or I can have another scene straight after. OK, let's look at the Valley of the Kings now. or Let's look at a different part of um, our inquiry. Um, so that's exciting. And then again, if you if you want to fill that up, then we can again have another interactive element um, of observations or questions. So. Um, having that ability to get feedback from the students is really, really important and made a lot more fun and more exciting. Here you've got um, uh, just a visual thinking routine as a background, so that's preloaded in. So you can change that. You can have a different table that you've made and you can have that um, ready to go. So you can almost um, have your, um, your guiding questions set already. So then you can ask the students to um, go ahead and use the text box there to... Um, Oh, wow, that's awesome, Mr. Aaron. Yeah, so just saw Aaron post the picture of his family gone to Egypt. So that's a great connection there. Um, and I'm sure you've explored these tools from the previous interaction as well. Um, but just another exciting way where you can um, really embed that um, inclusiveness and that interactivity into your um, content here. And again, like we've said, this can be student paced. This can be, they could be half the group in another classroom, another group in another classroom, people at home, and they'll all be at the same part of the lesson here. So that's uh, another powerful reason why we're exploring Nearpod. All right, I'm sorry, guys. I can see lots of people <laughs> having a go. I'm just going to move on. Um, that is most of it. But why I wanted to show you one more thing as well, as seen as we might be in a um, different parts and different parts of the school doing different things, is if you see my screen on Zoom, before the video plays on your Nearpod, it's giving me an option now to do I want to play it on this device, so my device, and then everybody on the call watch the video on my device, or do I want to push it all to your devices? So this is, again, a very powerful. If I did want to share video content, or if I did want a, a tuning in or a hook, or I wanted something just to... Um, get the um, the juices flowing, so to say, um, instead of having everybody watching it through my screen, and that might be difficult, especially, again, thinking of the hybrid model. If you're in a classroom and you've got a few students in front of you, few students at home, students in another classroom, you don't want everybody looking necessarily at the, the screen, the projector. So that can be tricky. So what I can do here is I can push this video to everyone's devices. So it could be a YouTube video, it could be anything, um, that I've, another source of uh, material, Vimo, something like that. But I could actually push this to your devices. And I can add questions as well. So I'm going to push it to your devices now. This might go amazingly well, or it might go 
really bad where everybody's uh, music and players start playing through the Zoom call. So if, if it does, I will move on quite quickly. But if I click on all devices, hopefully now you have the ability to play the video. Um, I'm going to play mine really quickly here. Okay, so luckily I haven't heard anyone's uh, mics jump at me with extra level, but you should be able to watch the video along with us. Um, you can embed questions. So if anyone's familiar with Edpuzzle, and you like the format Edpuzzle does where it has uh, it pauses the video for you, then asks you a thinking question based on that uh, or an open-ended question or a multiple choice question, you can embed that in Nearpod as well. So it's an, uh, an all-in-one tool. So you can not just have a video there, but you can say, hmm, what do you think about this part? Or um, how does this connect with our inquiry? So that, that's another really powerful tool here. Um, and so that would make it really easy for us to... Um, be able to do this in lots of different ways. Um, and that's why we're really keen to push this out where we are at the moment towards the end of the year because we're all remote learning from home at the moment or learning from home. And we might be in different places or doing different things. And this tool really helps us to have the ability to push that content wherever students may be. Uh, and we're not just looking necessarily through one teacher screen. Um, so yeah, there's another little um, quiz there. And as you can see on my screen, I can see the students' answers. So all these reports are downloadable at the end of my um, slide or my, um, my teaching content here. And all this, the responses that students have given me, so maybe if you want to use it as part of um, anecdotal um, uh, questions or um, uh, notes for your, yourself, or if you want to use it as part of a formative, um, anything that you want to glean from the interactions you've had here, from students, you can keep all this. You don't need to then write it separately or you don't need to copy and paste it. You can download the reports and you'll have access to the students' first thoughts, for example, if you're doing tuning in. I know a lot of the primary teachers are doing tuning in this week and next week. So there's a lot there that you could use this for and already start to build a picture of children's prior knowledge um, and their initial thoughts, which is great. And then you don't have to store that somewhere else. Um, and then if I wanted to say, uh, oh, uh, what well a Mr. Vashi, that's a, that's a really good question there. I could share that with the whole class. Or uh, Mr. Aaron had a really good question here. Uh, and I can share that with the class. There you go. So you can, you can pull up questions there. Um, hopefully that's given you um, a quick whistle-stop tour. Um, I said I'd only be 15 minutes, so that's, that's not too bad. Uh, whistle-stop tour of the capabilities of um, Nearpod. Um, I'll stop sharing now for a second so we come back here. Um, but you can see how Nearpod can be effectively used um, for um, a very content-heavy or interactively rich um, uh, sharing of content. I'm going to say uh, watching slides or PPTs because it's not necessarily like that. It's, it's much more than that. It's much more than just teacher-led content um, offloading. It's more of um, a discussion that you can have more of a collaboration um, uh, way of doing things. Uh, there are lots more features I could go into, and they've just recently launched a new tool where you can have your co-teachers in as the teacher as well. So that is exciting. Before, it was only one teacher having the ability to command all of that, but now they've added co-teachers as well. So it's great. So if you are um, co-teaching with uh, another teacher or the TA or, or whatever you need, you can have that as a, as a, as a feature as well. All right. So if you haven't had a chance to log in yet, um, I would recommend uh, we do that now if possible. And all you need to do to do that is go to nearpod.com. Uh, I'm sorry for administration, uh, uh, non-academic staff, and for leadership. Uh, I haven't added your accounts to the Nearpod roster yet, uh, but we'll get that sorted. Uh, if I just log out really quickly and share my screen with you, um, if we come to nearpod.com and we'll quickly have a go and if there's any issues with signing in we will troubleshoot that um let me get my chat box here and pop it there so there we go so if you go to nearpod.com so i've just opened my chat box and i can see a couple of questions uh i'll just pause for that um uh, miss priya is that a question still there uh, yeah, uh, so uh, students can type answers simultaneously. And what if, what if we were doing a listening activity where there was a passage, there was a text that they had to fill in the blanks with, 
and if multiple students are filling in the same so will it be on the same uh, like i use the annotation tool or uh, i use a google presentation and we use the annotation tool for the students to write answer in the spaces provided but obviously they overlap because mm-hmm. it's only one screen so over here will students be able to register answers separately yeah definitely uh, i can see mr priest priest shaking his head as well uh, not in his head sorry in agreement there is a way so each t- task or each individual interactivity bit that you do say fill in the blanks is an activity within nearpod or if you just want uh, an open ended text box uh, like we've been exploring then yes it, it, co- it makes a copy of each activity for each student so it was not all the students on one document or all the students like we have on Google Drive for example they each have their own separate tasks so you will be able to view each separate ones and so that's a good thing i think for what you're looking there for filling the blank yeah. activities all students can complete their own task on their own and you can get that feedback straight away and how uh, does it display the sorry one more question mm-hmm. how does it display these answers do we see them simultaneously like if you were annotating on a google presentation you could see all answers that the students are typing can we see that Yeah so yeah if you if you saw on my screen when I when everyone was filling in those um those drawing activities and things like that I could see the entire class so I could see everybody in the class I could see what they're doing where they've done how they submitted and how much time should I give them more so yeah you can see all that in one shot which is great Thank you. More, no problem. A couple more questions in the chat. Um, Ms. Rohini says, can we embed Google Earth 3D? Um, you can embed 3D um, spaces, 3D objects, and 3D images. I'm not sure if you can embed Google Earth 3D directly in. You will be able to add a link that you could guide them to and then move on. So we'll explore that. And I'm sure there are, um, when we look into the from the teacher's perspective, you can apply this to your own individual scenarios. Um, there's another question for... Um, Uh, what's the difference between free and premium nearpod um i think that is um a question we'll start to explore now because we a lot of us already have access to free uh, nearpod uh, the the biggest issue is that you can only have um 40 students at a time so if you wanted to do more than 40 students uh, you can't have that on the free version so if you're a GOC and you wanted the entire grade to come onto your document you can't do that so you'd have to have the the premium version also the 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 linking from so we'll have a look at if i want to link in my google slide so maybe i've made a fantastic google slide here and i want this to be on a, a nearpod so i want to add in some questions so this sorry grade 4 i've stolen your fantastic uh energy uh presentation here as an example so if i wanted these questions here so there's some there's some observation questions and i might just take these verbally at the moment i am in now imagine if we've got uh we're in a different model where there's people all over the place if i just wanted to get a quick uh feel for the pulse of the room uh, at the moment i would have to go to add-ons and i'd have to go to nearpod and then open nearpod and if you try to open nearpod on uh with a free account it will actually ask you to upgrade to premium upgrade to silver so that answers that question so if you wanted to have this integration where i'm integrating my my google slides and i'm at, okay i want this question to be an interactive question um then you would need to make sure you log in and to log in it will check if it's a free account or a premium account so that's the biggest drawback there by having a free account when you use a free account you can only log in here um and then that's it you're stuck But if you want to link it in with um your google slides and you'll need a login so you guys could, should be able to now is go on to nearpod.com sign in and you should be able to use your obroy logins and you should be able to come to a similar dashboard uh this might come up i'm just going to go to go to my library and you can see we've got four weeks left of our school free trial so i would encourage all the teachers to use those four weeks and try to get the most out of nearpod uh me and the leadership primary leadership team are keeping a, an eye on how many teachers are uh, using this and how they're using it in their classroom through our report um, and obviously the more teachers that use it the more likelihood we are to get this as a um, a permanent feature so yeah do encourage you in the next four weeks to even if you're not sure and you never used it before do have a go at making a lesson if you're in the primary team um, come grab me or Mr Pradesh and we'll we can go through either a grade uh, training or we can go through a pro- individual training with you to show you how it works and i'm sure your tech champions in secondary will be more than happy to help you and um, again if me and Mr Pradesh are available we'll um, can support them as well um, but yeah you should be able to log in 
with your go to Nearpod and you should be able to use your Oberoi login and you'll have access to uh, your lessons. So you can have uh, you can create a lesson through Nearpod uh, and that looks a little bit like this. So you can add in, I'll, I'll show you how to do this in a second, but you can add in different interactive elements and content directly through Nearpod. So I can click on create a lesson and I'll have lots of different options of a quiz, for example, so I can add content and activities here. So just like a normal slide here, this is all the content really that uh, Nearpod has available to us. So uh, we, uh, Ms. Rohini asked about a Nearpod 3D. So yeah, there, there are 3D elements in here and we can explore the Nearpod 3D um, library. Uh, and a lot of them are just 3D models. So there's lots in here for secondary as well as primary. Um, but as you can see, if you're doing, I know grade four are doing human body. So this might be a really good idea, uh, a good way of doing um, uh, a 3D model of the body to, for the children to explore. Um, sound for grade five. So I'm just thinking of primary modules, but I'm sure secondary teachers um, are picking up um, ideas as well. So there's, you can add 3D models. Uh, you can explore all this in your own time, no problem. The VR field trips, again, are in there. So if you want to have a, a location-based, like we showed you the Pyramid of Giza, that's in there. Uh, and lots more audio if you want to do a listening activity, video, and just general slides. If we click on the activities, this is when we get the Nearpod native activity. So this is what Nearpod makes. So the matching pairs are there. Fill in the blank, Miss Priya is there for you. Uh, memory tests, you can even embed Flipgrid if you use Flipgrid. I know grade three it might be exploring Flipgrid for their dance unit, so you can have that straight in there. Uh, quizzes as a formative or even a summative, you can have that. A bit of gamification, uh, open-ended questions. And loads, loads more. I'm not going to be able to go through all of the features in Nearpod, but please check them out and explore and have a go at um, uh, integrating your lessons into Nearpod. Um, and again, two ways to do that. Um, I know I'm running out of time, so I'll just quickly whiz through that. I won't make one right here, but this is one way of doing it is by going signing into Nearpod and then making your lesson. Or the other way is to go, like we saw, if we go on to... Um, Google Slides, and I've already got a pre-made presentation. Go to add-ons, go to Nearpod, go to open Nearpod, and then I log in here, and it should sign connect me up. No problems. Always do single sign-in. It's so much easier with our Oberoi logins. And there, those exact same features I had through Nearpod, I can now embed directly into my presentation. So what that might look like, if I want to fill in the blanks, for example, I could either click, and it will come up to add or edit my slide. And I can customize what my question might be. So the text here, um, and uh, I'm just going to keep it really boring. And then I can add in, hopefully when it loads. Okay, yeah, here I can add my text. Hi. Hello. There you go. So I won't, I won't go into the fill in the blanks technique here, but it's that it's that easy, basically. I can click on what I need, collaboration board, and I can add that in. Okay, I, I won't mess around with that right now, but let's have a look at the collaboration board. And this is good if you're doing something like Padlet. I can chuck that in there straight away. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time to load, uh, but you can see it's loaded. I can enter my topic description and then uh, I'll just do a quick test one. And there you go. So now in my presentation, when I present this, it can be, uh, they'll, it'll come up with a collaboration slide there straight after my first question. There you go. And that'll keep it ready to go. So I know I, if I edit this slide, it might get rid of uh, this collaboration board so I can move on. There are also one last thing before we, we stop and take questions, and I know teachers want to, might want to shoot off at four o'clock, um, is the Nearpod library. So if you click on Nearpod library, there is tons and tons of resources here that you can explore um, and lots of different um, uh, topics as well and subjects. So you can have a look at the different subjects here if you are a single subject teacher in secondary or if you're teaching a certain uh, inquiry or a certain concept in primary. Um, I just typed in geography, for example, for the Pyramids of Giza one, and there's loads of different resources there, um, and they keep adding more and more each time. So definitely check that um, that out. And we will also have access to a school library. So any sort of resources that you want to share, uh, there's nothing been added yet, but we'll have an access almost like Seesaw for the primary teachers where any content that's created, you could add it in there for you, the rest of your grade or uh, the rest of your other colleagues to use. Um, that's pretty much it as a really quick whistle stop tour. There are more as we can look at the reports and things like that, but at the moment, um, teachers just go ahead and explore Nearpod. You have premium access now, and then you can either embed your 
current slides that you're already using for tomorrow or in the coming weeks, or you can go ahead, log into Nearpod and create it there. And do let us know if you need any more help. Um, before everyone starts uh, disappearing, I'm just going to stay around for about 10 minutes or so for any questions. Um, if you think, okay, I've got the information that I need and you are, you, you want to, you want to disappear and finish off any other work that you need to do, that's absolutely fine. Um, but, uh, any questions so far, um, from anyone based on Nearpod? I'm sorry, that was half an hour quite quick, but let me know quite a few questions. Um, Go ahead, Miss. I had a question regarding, um, like, suppose you have made, uh, lessons or exercises to do and assignments to do would you be able to see the progress of every student how many they have done in any interactive way like you know yeah absolutely i didn't um spend much time on this today because it's, it's more of an advanced lesson but yes if i click on reports here i will be able to see um everybody the reports of everybody and how they got on uh, i didn't actually use my account i used the admin account which is mr aaron's account uh but if i did log in and see the reports there everybody who added onto the the drawing board there or the the um uh the the questions we saw there there you go i can see that I've got um, some reports here so I can see how many students were logged in on the call. And if I go in, I get a bigger breakdown of each question. So I can see all the students, um, how they answered the question. Uh, if they got the, if I'm doing a formative, I can even give them a score, for example. Um, and I've got the poll there. I can see who responded to the poll. Uh, and I can see uh, the open-ended questions, the think parents sh share. So I can see who answered and the drawer as well. I should be able to see everybody's drawings as well. So that's just a quick, so if you go onto reports, you will be able to see all the student responses. I hope that- Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Uh, anything else, guys? I can see uh, some Yeah, go ahead. Can we, can we export slides directly from uh, Google presentation into the into Neopod? Uh, yes, yeah, so the way it works is that you need to use the add-on here. So you come onto the add-ons, and once you finish, what will happen is you press save and go to Nearpod, and it will convert your Google Slides into a Nearpod presentation, okay. and then it will load up here, and then it will be on Nearpod for you to use. At okay. the moment, it's importing. It's a bit confused because I'm logged into a different account. But if I okay. sign out this account, it, it should come here. In fact, I'll do that really quickly. But um, yeah, so I convert it Thank from you. a Google Slides into a Nearpod, and then on Nearpod, I can adjust it. Excellent. Cool. Hopefully answers that question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pradesh, is answering some questions in the chat for me. Uh, I hope the ones are answered. Yes, Ms. Priya's questions answered. Ms. Sneha's answered, I think. Uh, thank you. And... Mr. Sydney? Yes, Ms. Uh, when I try to download certain reports, uh, I mean, can you just show how once again to download the reports probably? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry, Ms. Pree, if you're still there, there there's my um, lesson there. My lesson's there now on Nearpod. Uh, I will just go back and log into Mr. Aaron's account. So this is why you should have one account <laughs> while you do this. Um, yes, so if I log in, I can download as a PDF uh, my reports and have access to that. Let's see. Yeah, like the entire lesson, or we'll have to do it slide-wise down. So yeah, I can download as a session view or student view. So I can I can download the entire um, slides as a PDF and the response is here. And I can even download it as a, a CSV file as well. So if I click on that, um, I can either save it to my Google Drive or my local drive. I'll just download it to my computer for now. And hopefully we'll have a look at that. Uh, well, that's downloading. Is there anything, any other questions, guys? Um, this might take some time. Um, so if you were able, here it goes. Here we are. Just save that in there, and we'll open that up. So here we go. I can see all the the reports here um, from uh, their responses. I can see who was there uh, and their drawings, things like that. It's pretty. Yeah, it's it's not. But what so, about the sentences? Like when they reply, like an answer, like this. Because the last time, I, maybe I must have made some up because of which I couldn't see the anecdotes that the kids were writing. Yeah, so at the, yeah, you can see here like the, the text might come pretty small here if I download the entire report as a session report. And we can we can look at reports a little more in depth. But if I click on PDF of the student view, I can choose which student I would have to. So I'd have to download. I know Mr. Aaron did uh, quite a lot of responses. So let's download, 
I missed that and got on. Download that. So now I can see the student. Okay, yeah, it's still pretty small from a PDF point of view. Uh, we will explore that in the studio, oh. I guess, as a division and explore how we can get that um, bigger and better. And obviously, if we need to speak to Nearpod, we can do that as well. But the reports Thank are there for you to see. And yeah, I just we'll have to uh, find a way to do that a bit more elegantly. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Good question, though. We'll check that for sure. Uh, Sydney, can yes, you sir. annotate or can you give uh, feedback uh, when they are actually working, when they are doing some sort of activity? Like, let's say in my class, I have a diverse learner. So there are some students which I have to do some scaffolding. So is there a way that I can help them? I mean, during the activity? Yeah, really good, really good question. If you are doing a, a synchronous lesson, how would you give uh, written feedback? Um, mm. At the moment, you'd be, you'd be able to do verbal feedback quite well because you'll be able to see how they're getting on. Mm. So you'll be able to see your student who needs more support. You'll be like, okay, the, you, you'll be able to see light. Okay, he's not really understanding or she's not really yeah. understanding. How can I support her verbally? Um, if you want them to write them a message maybe through Nearpod, I'm not sure if that's a feature um, where you can give that student actual like there's no like bubble that will pop up on their screen like it happens on zoom or google meet where they'll get that message and it'll say oh you know good job or this is what you need to do so i, I yeah we can explore that no problem Ms. Jelfer, but yeah I'm it's not... just that often i have to wait uh, after my class ends because those students they are not like willing to talk in front of entire class so i have to wait so if there is a way then yeah or maybe you can just uh, ask on your pod maybe you can give your yeah feedback. We'll explore yeah. that together. But yeah, that's the benefit of having Nearpod is that they won't need to necessarily wait to the end to interact. They can, if they're not shy on talking or things like that, they can just do it writtenly through the um, through the activities there. And you can still get their feedback uh, written um, through that. And then you can support them um, through that. And go, okay, okay, I need this person needs a bit more help and things like that. So yeah, it's exciting. But yeah, we'll explore that. No problem, Mr. Chopper. And um, let you know if there is, is there a way a to do that. possibility, uh, Sydney, mm -hmm. for setting up a schedule, a time frame? through which we can complete a particular assignment. Uh, like uh, if yeah. I have uh, 15 minutes and then so it has to be done within the time frame or maybe a certain period of time that you may uh, attempt it uh, yeah. up till say the, the 20th of April. Yeah, exactly. So this is... Um... This is uh, the other feature we didn't explore today, but you can have this student paced, uh, student paced method for asynchronous learning. So here I've got the, oh, I've already made one. I'll just, uh, yeah. So I've got here, I can adjust the expiration date. So if I wanted them to finish this in time, I could at the moment it's a default of 30 days. But if I said, okay, I want this done by Friday, I can change how long this Nearpod is going to be active for. So if it's going to be an active for the end of the week, I'll apply that and they have three days remaining to finish that off. Um, I'm not sure if you can change the time. It looks like it's taking the time I set it at. So um, yeah, you might want to sit, do it the day after. So if you want it by Friday afternoon and you've set this on Monday morning, you might want to give them to Saturday morning to do that. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like I can change the time. But I can change the date, no problem. So I can set it for that time. So yeah, that you can do that, no problem. <laughs> Okay. Um, Sydney and uh, Pradesh, thank you guys for putting this on today. Very much appreciate it. Good job. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you guys for coming. We'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Sydney.